I'm gonna take a shot on this one. I'm gonna say beer. I'm buying everybody round on this! Oh my god! Welcome back, everybody, to Big Apple Hockey Bar Talk, where we are gauging our confidence on NHL topics based on our choice of drink. Are you depressed and just need a shot? You so so, you'll have a beer. Are you so confident? You're buying everybody around. So let's see where we are, and let's start with this one to Mr. John Falkowski first. John, Filk, the Rangers should keep Mika Zibanejad high on the power play. We're talking along the near side boards. Uh, yeah, the the Panarin spot. Um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna buy a beer here. Um, I I think they should do that, and then um, just you know, kind of work things out from there. I like Artemi Panarin in, in that spot, but um, I think we need to experiment. I wouldn't mind seeing Mika Zibanejad play in the bumper either. I I think that they have the uh the ability to do it. So let them uh let them experiment. And, uh, you know, if it's working for now, let it continue to go. Why fix something that's not broken? So going to beer here. I'm going to take this one, Anthony, first, and I'm going to say beer as well. The only reason why I'm going to say beer is because it wouldn't hurt giving teams different looks that they had to prepare for. The only problem that I have is that I would love it if there's some way both of them could be on the ice in that one spot at the same time, but they can't. Switching it up would be a good thing. The problem would be you're taking you, – just say the words. You're taking Artemi Panarin off power play one. It's not going to last that long. Yeah, and I'd love to get Kako in the middle, have a left-handed shot in the bumper. But, you know, it's it's something that that they're probably best with Panarin in that spot. Anthony. Um, I'm going to go beer. I, I, I will say, though, I think um, it's good to have one of your – Best, one of your best shooting players up high um, or in that bumper spot. Um, and then it's best to have your facilitators, you know, either along the wall um, or kind of down low. But Zabenejad is more useful where he could use his shot and he has a strong enough shot to play up high. Um, but again, also that, that bumper spot, it's good to have a guy in there who could shoot because you get you have him find that soft spot um, and then the release is huge and getting it on goalie. So, um but I also, you know, I'm not going around because I do think that it's good to kind of switch things up every now and then. Like you said, to give, make sure teams uh, can't just, you know, hone in on one look you have, make them adjust. Um, but uh, it, it's it'll be a beer for me on this one. I'll and also, one just to say quick, this, yeah, go, I'm going to go to you first. One last quick point before we move on from this one. The other night um, when Chris Kreider scored that power play goal, they tried to force the one-timer to Mika two times in a row. And then Fox went, they went back to Fox and they put the shot on net and Kreider got the deflection. When you give them a different look, it, it, it throws everything off for the penalty killers. You got to keep mixing it up. Yeah. And also I do have to say for this though, it did get Mika going. Uh, Panarin yeah. not being able to finish the Arizona game. Mika went up to that top spot, had the, uh, the goal that tied the game. Kaka with the game winner. I think that came right after that. So it was something that just got, the team going and that's what it is anthony we talked about him a minute ago but we're going to talk about him again for the shorter segment and that's the islanders need to keep keep for bellows in the lineup every day uh if you know if he continues playing like this uh you, you gotta you gotta go with around here um the only the only issue is that you know let's let's let, let's just call a spade a spade in hockey you know what you make and stuff uh money wise kind of really affects, you know, where you play and in the lineup and you play every day. So when Palmieri's back, um, even though he's got one goal, um, it's going to be hard to keep a guy making, you know, $5 million, uh in the press box because there's really no other guy you could conceivably take him out for. I mean, may, maybe maybe Parise, but even though he's not scoring, he brings – he brings too much to the table in terms of his, you know, his forecheck and his work on the penalty kill. So I, I, I don't see that happening. So, um, but, you know, as of right now, look, Keeper Bells, let's call it like it is. He's playing the best hockey of his young career. Um, and he's playing confidence. So to take him out right now would probably really uh, hurt him in that, in that department. So you got to keep him in. Um, but the only thing is Paul Mary coming back kind of, it makes me feel like it's not going to happen, but um, like I said, for now, uh, he needs to stay in. So I'll say round. Talk. 
Um, I'm going with Round and Shannon's uh, comment right here. It, it just it, you got to keep him in. I don't understand how you would take him out for Palmieri. I don't care what Palmieri is making. Palmieri's contract means nothing to me if he's not going to produce. And in this sport and in sports in general, it's got to work like a meritocracy. You look like a clown if you're going to sit there and you're going to bench guys like Wallstrom, like Bellows, like Dobson, and so on, and try to teach them lessons when guys like Bailey and Palmieri can play like crap night after night and not see a, a single minute off for it. So, you know what? Don't pull a David Quinn, Barry. Be smart. Play your best players. Play the guys that are playing right. And don't worry about the damn contracts. Round. And I'm buying a round two on this. Because, again, I've been touting that they should be playing Kiefer Bellows for like the last two or three seasons, never mind just right now. But your goal is to win the Stanley Cup. But right now, what's the other thing I said last week for the New Year's resolution? Get younger, get faster. You're not getting that with Kyle Palmieri. You're getting that with Kiefer Bellows. That's why the New York Islanders need to get back in there. Guys, over the weekend, uh, I, we were, we've been talking about how we're waiting to find out who got our press credentials for the All-Star game. But I also couldn't help but smile and think we could have been at the Winter Classic, which would have been negative nine to, or sorry, negative 10 degrees at opening faceoff. So, guys, the Winter Classic is still the spectacle of the NHL regular season. Uh, and Folk, sorry. Yeah, I mean, of course, it's an outdoor game. It's a spectacle. It's a show. It, it's it, it's the NHL's version of grandstanding, basically. Uh, and, and good. You know what? It, it, when you have things like this, you can help grow the game this way. It helps when the game is good. I mean, a little snow doesn't hurt, you know, so this way it adds to the, the aesthetic part of it. But um, they, they do a good job in getting these uh, games out and, and getting them uh, played. And you know what? With the temperatures and the, and the fact that they had to heat up the ice a little bit, you know, it was a little tougher this year. So I'm, I'm buying around on this. All right. Anthony? Um, I'll go round, but I, I will say I think with, with how they added the stadium series outdoor games to the mix over the last couple of years has, you know, took away the, the I don't know, I guess. Walker. Yeah, from, from it. I like it better when it's just one, one a year. Uh, but regardless, though, like Phil said, it still is it still is a spectacle. The show they put on is nice. Um, you know, kids, you know, every hockey player will tell you, especially the ones in Canada, that like playing on the pond outside was, you know, where their roots growing up. Um, so it, everyone loves it. The players love it. The, the, the most of the fans love it. Um, the one thing I will say, I love how they got creative and did the Lake Tahoe game last year. Um, mm -hmm. I would like to see them, you know, try to switch it up just a little bit, keep things fresh. Um, but, you know, I, I love the Winter Classic every year. I look forward to it. Um, so that's why I'm going to go with a round. But, yeah, you're right. Boy, it was cold. I mean, I saw a picture on Instagram of, like, people's beer really freezing. Um, <laughs> it's, yeah. It, that, 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 I mean, playing, let's say, in, like, eight-degree temperatures is probably brutal. But can you imagine sitting there playing in a, neg a game that when it's negative 17 degrees outside, feel, you know, real field, negative 24, or whatever it was? Um, <laughs> that's, that's insane. I think I, I think we had practice when I was in high school because we played Beth Page ice rink back when it was outdoors and it was like like negative 10 with the wind chill and that but that's still wind chill. I mean, there was still I think like it was in the teens, I think. So it was no, it's it's I can't imagine playing that. And it was cold with those days. Uh, I'm going to buy everybody around because I'll tell you what, they still do a great a better job with the Winter Classic than they do with the stadium series. And the other thing is that. You know, the stadium series, it exists because sometimes to get a Rangers Devils game or the Rangers Islanders, it's a little bit more small scale because yeah. especially back then, uh, I mean, the Islanders were in challenge for a Stanley Cup at that time. So it was great to have that. You were able to experiment, have Dodgers Stadium be a host for an outdoor game. Yeah. Those, those things are great. Now, um, I still would love to see a Florida uh, outdoor game. I don't know when that's going to happen, but. Hopefully they'll figure out a way to do that, or even if it's indoors, but trying to figure that out. Because you, you try, you want to get everybody wants to host the Winter Classic. That's the way uh, the Winter Classic itself. Now outdoor games, eh? But you know what? We got to go to the team that had the first outdoor game, and that was the Edmonton Oilers. Edmonton Oilers are going to miss the playoffs, boys. And you know something? 
I'm going to start the timer and start this one myself. Yep. You're missing the playoffs. De- I mean, we're buying around all, all throughout this. Wow. Show. It's just, here's, here's the thing. Wow. Miko Koskinen is bad. He's not the only problem. When if it's not McDavid and if it's not dry sidle, they don't win. And the Rangers made them look stupid the other night. Absolutely stupid. I am going so far to say that. I don't know if Simeon Verlama is going to save them. I don't know if me, if um, Mark Andre Fleury is going to save them. More on him in a second. But this this team's got a lot more problems, and it's not even Dave Tippett. They've got a real personnel problem. They got a makeup problem. Ken Holland's got his work cut out for him, and it was already doing a terrible job. <laughs> Anthony, <laughs> um, I'm I'm a really harsh critic of them right now, but I'm not going to say round just because. If you look at the teams that are behind them by a couple of points, um, L.A. I think is one point behind them. Winnipeg's in 10th, I think, three points behind them. Um, you know, even the Canucks are in shouting difference, uh, distance of them. But um, at the end of the day, I think McDavid and Dreisaitl probably aren't enough to overcome the deficiencies to, to win a Stanley Cup because um, playoff hockey is totally different. But I do think those two guys are good enough to perform in the regular season to carry them. Um, so I, I, I think they will get in. Um, but at this rate, I think they're going to be another easy out. Uh, and I just can't imagine what, how that's going to weigh on McDavid and, you know, when, you know, the boiling point for him might come at some point, but, um, you know, I'm uh, I, right now they have a lot of issues. They're not good defensively. Um, after Nugent Hopkins, um, you know, they really need more help. Pulley Arvey's just kind of okay. Uh, they have, they have a lot of issues. I mean, we can go on for a while and talk about it. It's so all handed over to Phil, but um, boy, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say beer, but they're, they're not in a good spot. Phil, you have a fresh 65 seconds, but I hope you're not going to need all of it. Uh, it. It's just, I don't trust Edmonton's defense. I don't trust the goaltending. I'm going to say beer. I'm going to start off just by saying beer, but I don't trust their defense and goaltending. Um, Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl were scoring at, a, at about two point per game paces earlier on in the year. And they carried that into like November, almost December. Now they're on pace for only 130 points. I know. Only. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a funny word to say right there. Right. But if you look at the teams that are chasing them, like Anthony said, you, you look at it, Winnipeg is right behind them with a game in hand and only one point behind. Look at their goaltending, Connor Hellebuck. And that, that, that's a Vezina winner right there. The, uh, I mean, I trust him a lot more than I trust either. With games in hand, if I recall correctly. Uh, no, they have only have one game in hand on Edmonton. Still one point in that. It's, so. it's one point, one game in hand. And then right behind them, though, that I mean, the thing is with Winnipeg, do you trust their defense? I don't know if I trust Winnipeg's defense. Uh, L.A., I don't trust their goaltending. I don't trust their defense. Uh, and San Jose, I don't trust their goaltending. Their defense and their play is good, but I do not trust their goaltending to save their lives. And Vancouver, even though they're better under Boudreaux, what do we call Boudreaux? The Marty Schottenheimer of the NHL. And why? Because you never can figure out defense. Even though they're improved, they're still a bad defensive team. So uh, I think Edmonton can make it. I, I just I think it might be by the skin of their teeth, and they're a first-round exit again. And we thought the Jack Eichel situation is going to get ugly. Watch it, Edmonton, if you don't make the playoffs and win around this year. So I almost, I, I almost salivated that thought. But so, oh, and by the way, I'm sorry, guys, I forgot to say this: Edmonton Oilers two seven and two in their last eleven games. Moving down from, uh, the, I don't know if you can actually move a greater distance. Two, the two eight and two in their last twelve. Wow. Yeah. Um, if you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.